Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am Keeper Bloodworth, and as you can see by the graphics, uh, today's video I'm going to continue my series of uh, Call of Cthulhu, the Classic Edition. I'm going to go to uh, Character Generation. This is Episode 2, as you can see. And uh, a few things before I get started. Uh, number one, looking over the different editions of the game that I do have. Uh, so I have uh, this classic edition, which is primarily second edition. I have third edition and I have seventh edition. Uh, it, it is very, very easy for you to create a character utilizing any of these conditions and moving backwards or forwards through the uh, through the different editions of the game. And the only thing that's really going to change is the selection of skills possible because um, there are more there are more eras settings for the later editions of Call of Cthulhu. So Call of Cthulhu second edition was primarily 1920s. And uh, Call of Cthulhu 7th edition, you obviously have everything from modern through the various different time periods through uh, down to the 1920s again. Uh, you also have, by extension of uh, supplements and such, different locations. So they're not all centered on whether it be Arkham or just uh, New England in the 1920s and so forth. So there is a lot of uh, forwards and backwards compatibility uh, that you can utilize the basic game mechanics of the uh, of the game is pretty uniform throughout. So that's the first thing. Second thing I wanted to point out is that um, I will be showing you the character creation uh, as I'm doing it, uh, I'm reading from the book that came in with the uh, collector's set. Let's see if I get my finger going right. That big white box there, that's the two inch, that's the two inch classic edition, uh, which came out sometime last year. Uh, and it is still available today. If you look at the first video in this, I'll actually show it, I actually show it to you. Uh, you can get it for about $120, which is a steal considering you get all of the printed materials plus the PDFs of everything that you see on the screen here in the image. Uh, so just phenomenal, uh, phenomenal purchase to be made. So, uh, you know, make sure that you do that. Next thing before we get into it, uh, and the rule book itself tells you, you know, what to read and, and your, or just to familiarize yourself with the Cthulhu mythos and, and the setting and so on. And uh, I pulled out one of the books that was my introduction, introduction to H.P. Uh, Lovecraft. And uh, it's one of my favorite uh, books. And that is Blood Curdling Tales of Horror and the Macabre. And so you can still get a hold of this. And uh, at the time I paid maybe $17 for this. I'm sure that you know, it, it may or may not be available in this format any longer. I also have the entire H.P. Lovecraft catalog on, um, on uh, audio. And H.P. Lovecraft's writings are all in the public domain. And so you can find the short stories uh, or novellas out there on the internet as well for free and perfectly... Um, perfectly legitimate because they are public domain. So several different ways that you can access the original stories uh, as H.P. Lovecraft had written them. And they are a great primer for you to be prepared to jump into a Call of Cthulhu, regardless of edition, a Call of Cthulhu campaign, whether you're running it or you're playing it. So, without further ado, let me jump right into the uh, the nuts and bolts of this particular uh, this particular uh, blah, episode. Blah, sorry, 
Uh, so Call of Cthulhu, this is the, uh, the rule book. I'm going to be reading from this, and I am going to be focusing on Chapter 2, Creating the Investigator. And uh, I will set everything else aside. Now, I did find on Roll20 a... Um, I did find on Roll20 a character sheet that is fairly close to the one that's here. Uh, they're not exact, but it's certainly serviceable and, uh, you know, and pretty much you can get the official ones for 7th edition as well, as well as, uh, you can get 2nd edition, but only in French. I don't know why it's only in French, but it is there in French. And uh, I used, I'm pretty sure, just a... A Call, uh, Call of Cthulhu uh, all editions version of the uh, you know of the character sheet and it certainly looks like it will go fine. So I am you're actually going to watch me as I make the dice rolls. I'm going to read the sections from the rules for each of those and then you'll see that in real time. I can't do screen on screen because uh, the last time that I tried doing that um, you either read everything uh, that I had on the one side with the text and the other side um, you really couldn't see the dice rolls I'd rather you see the actual character creation than otherwise I'm just gonna pause this for a quick second okay so I'm gonna pick up where I left off uh, unfortunately it was a little interruption but uh, let's get right back into this I am going to be shifting over to roll 20 and start doing the character creation. I'm going to be reading directly from the rules as I stated and, um, and making the dice rolls right in front of you so you can see in real time character generation. So here I have my character. His name is going to be Philip, Philip Burton, Edward Philip Burton. I um, determined he would be a male, age 40, um, haven't chosen his colleges and degrees just yet. His birthplace is going to be Providence, Rhode Island, and, uh, you know, an homage to H.P. Uh, Lovecraft himself. And let's get right into rolling up the characteristics as is, uh, as is determined by the rules here. So... In uh, Chapter 2, Creating the Investigator, I'm going to go with Strength, and Strength is rolling a 3d6. So I will go to my dice roller here, and I am going to roll 3d6. And a 15, so he's actually quite strong. Let's see if I can just type that directly in. Perfect. So now he has a 15 Strength, and now the next is his Constitution, which I am going to roll 3d6 as well. And let's see, uh, an 11, not bad. So an 11, constitution. Next is size. Size is rolling 2d6 plus 6. So I'm going to just roll 2d6, and uh, I, I will do this kind of a dice roller, just so you could see. So you type slash r 2d6 plus 6, and you hit and a 9. So his size is a 9. So fairly average size as well. Um, next is dexterity. No, I'm sorry. Next is intelligence. I'm rolling 2d6 plus 6 again. So I can... Um, so roll 2d6 plus 6. Kind of hoping for high. Uh, we shall see. Let's see what he ends up with. A 13. That's not too bad. Um... So his intelligence is going to be a 13. <clears throat> his power, his power is rolling a 3d6. So I will go back over to here and roll 3d6. Again, I'm hoping for high. Um, a 10. All right, so that's roughly average power. So his power is a 10. And uh, his dexterity is 3d6. So let's see, a 9, slightly below average, but uh, but not going to be a detriment. 9. <coughs> His appearance is 3d6. 
Now, appearance isn't just the physical appearance. It also kind of includes personality traits and, and such too, or, or just overall personality. Um, okay, so he's kind of average, kind of milk toast uh, in appearance as well. Uh, and now we're going to go, his education is 3d6 plus 3. So I will do this 3d6 plus 3. And let's see. A 13, not bad. <clears throat> it's actually kind of like very average with the plus three included in there. And you can see it's already increasing his, uh, it's setting his luck and his knowledge and so forth. All right. Um, let's see. So education, his sanity is expressed as, uh, so sanity. Every character has a measure of his sanity expressed as a number between one and a hundred. A sanity of 99 represents the exceptionally strong mind capable of absorbing strong shocks and intelligent and, and to the int intellect without incurring permanent damage. So let's see. A character's initial sanity is equal to his initial luck, luck roll, which is power times five. So his sanity, and we have here, it's already there. You can already see his sanity is 50. And I can actually put in the bubble, which I like this character sheet for having that. I can put that in there. His, um, his magic ability. So magic points reach zero. Let's see, magic points are derived from the power. A character's magic points are a measure of his or her current level of potential magical ability. Um... Power also determines the character's initial sanity. So let's see, his magic and his power are going to be 10, and his hit points are going to be 10. So I, I kind of like the fact that it shows how um, it gives you two different expressions, right? It gives you the number of sanity points here, but you also have it here so you can tick off on the uh, character sheet itself. So next thing I'm going to do is I am going to, uh, now that I have his characteristics pretty much uh, set off, did I do his size? Um, size is, oh, so there's the damage, right? So his size plus his strength. So his size is a nine and his strength is a 15. So his damage bonus is going to be based on a 24. And so a 24, he has no additional damage bonus. So zero. Okay. So working for a living. So now we're going to get into his, uh, his occupation. And I am going to go with uh he has a fairly decent education and a um fairly decent uh intelligence right so a 13 a 13 um i forget yeah, his his stats are really pretty average uh his strength is the only one that the highest one that's that's kind of interesting but um uh, i'm gonna go with a he is going to be a professor so he is going to be a professor And as a professor, and I'm just going to check off some of his, uh, his professional uh, skills. So I'm going to box those off. So anthropology, all right, um, astronomy, chemistry. Geology. Here we go. Library use. Occult. Uh, let's see. Did I grab archaeology? Not yet. 
botany. Ooh, I don't see botany there. Interesting. Um, interesting that botany is not there. Uh, let's see. I'll type that one in. Uh, debate. Debate is also not there. I'll have to insert that in um, as additional skills. Uh, I can add those skills uh, up over here. So um, let's see. Reading and writing other languages. Own language is going to be obviously his own language and it's going to be education times five. So his own lang language, which is English, is going to be education times five. His education is a 13. No, I'm sorry. His education is a 13. Yes, that was right. So times five, that would be a 50 is a uh, 65. So that's not terrible. Um, I'm surprised botany is not in there. Well, I'm going to add some skills here, right? So I'm going to add and I'll add those skills that uh, are not here. So ast astronomy or nope, it was the first one not there was botany. And nothing in there yet. So I'm going to put botany there. And then the other skill that uh, was not here was debate. All right. And let's see what else he was missing. History and linguistics, so I know history is here. And linguistics. Linguistics is not here, so I'll put linguistics. Okay. History and linguistics. And that's everything. So that's everything that they start off with. Now, adding the actual skill points now, they get a number of skill points based on, um, based on various things. So based on their, um, their education level, uh, and then they end up with... Uh, basically two pools. They, they end up with the first pool is based on their education level and then the second pool that can be spent in their professional skills and then they have a generic pool that they can also use. So let's get to the actual uh, skill points that they receive. In starting out the character obtains skills representing his or her past training in the occupation to determine the character's experience, decide upon his or her occupation, and then multiply his education times 15. So his education times 15 would be 13 times 15. Um, I am going to, uh, da, 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 let's see, <laughs> uh, I am, I'm not going to leave this up to. So 13 times 15 equals 195. So he's going to have 195 points in order to spend on that thing. I'm just going to throw him in mental disorders right now. So 195 and I'll do my calculations from there. So, um, so this is the number of percentile points he may add to skills listed under his occupation. After completing allocating his points, points are not allocated or lost. He multiplies his intelligence times five to determine the number of percentile points he may allocate among any skills he wishes, including skills not covered by his occupation. So intelligence times five, his intelligence is a 13. So 13 times five is going to be 
uh, 65 points. So 65 points elsewhere. So this is his professional skills. And then this is other areas. Okay. So professional skills. So he has 195 in professional skills. Um, I am going to... I am going to, uh, let's see, how many skills does he have? He has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. He has 14 different areas, 195. So he can easily put in 10 points in every single area he wishes to. You have to remember the base amounts that they do have here as well in some cases. So some of these might have a base score like history has a 20. So if he adds extra to that, it will increase the amount that um, that he will have here. So let's see. I am going to distribute his points. Um, if I'm going to spend 195 points, I want... I want to add at least, I want to put 20 points in anthropology, 20 points in archaeology. Um, I'm going to mute this for a second. I want to close the door. Okay, I am back. So let's see, let's continue on. Uh, chemistry, I'm going to put 10 points in chemistry. Remember, this is a starting out character, so you don't necessarily have to have, uh, you know, anything like super high. Mythos, uh, Cthulhu Mythos knowledge, right? I want to put 20 in there. Okay, disguise, dodge is dexterity times two. So this is uh, automatic, like a starting out dexterity times two is an 18. So I'm just gonna pop that in here. So dexterity times two is 18. Uh, electronics, fast talking is five. First aid is already 30. Um, Hide is already 10. Jump is already 25. Law is already 5. Uh, let's see. Library use. Now, I want this to be much, much higher. So I'm going to keep on putting in those 20s to have, uh, you know, just to kind of expend roughly how much I want in each thing for the very beginning. Remember, this is a starting out character, so they might not be very high in various things. Um, his occult. I want higher in a cult. I'm going to put 20 in there as well. I am now down to 85 points to continue spending within his life, you know, within his areas of expertise. I want I want some other languages, right? So I want to add um I want to add some other languages here and Botany starts out at zero. I just want to double check that. Debate starts at 10. So I want to put that minimum in there. And linguistics, linguistics starts at zero. Uh, so I'll leave that there. So a cult I have at 20. I'm going to probably go higher in that here. Let's see any of these other things. So persuade is 15. Um, pilot persuade I went a little bit higher now I'm going to take from my other pool all right uh, under persuasion I'm going to take from my pool of 65 points for that and I'm going to put 20 points in that so this now will become a 35 
psychology, I am going to put, uh, I'm going to put 20 points in there as well. So this will make that a 25. Um, surprising how people end up people have like starting experience you know starting skills with firearms is is pretty uh you know pretty uh crazy uh let's see do they have that in the original system no they don't um <clears throat> but I, they do have it on the attacks chart so he has those there um botany i'm not going to bother with linguistics i want to add uh, 20 points there. So he is going to have 20 points in linguistics. That comes from his original pool. And let's see where I want to add a little bit more and where I'm putting it. Um, it's not going to make very much sense for him to have a really high skill level in various combat um, skills. Uh, you know, shotgun, rifle, machine gun, certainly not, a uh, handgun and such. So I'm going to hold off on those. I want to add some additional languages because that, to me, if he's scholarly, that kind of makes sense. All right, so and these are going to come from his professional pool. So under language, I am going to put, um, I am going to put that he has uh, German and I am going to put 20 points in German so he's now down to 45 points in that and let's see what else I want here so now I want to start specializing I have 45 more points to spend in some of these other areas so I am going to put um, I am going to put another 20 points in archaeology. So that will bring it up to a 40. And I believe if they have a 50 or higher, actually, I'm going to put another 10 points in archaeology because I want that to be a 50. Um, that basically means that he is a specialist in archaeology um, at, at a very high degree, right? So probably like a, a PhD in archaeology. And I want to put the rest into the occult. And so that will bring him up to a 35. Do I want to take away from any of these other things to bring that up? Um, I'm not thinking so. I can take from his English language because that's a preset. I didn't actually put any extra points in there. Um, I put some extra, I want that library use up there as well. Um, German, let's bring his German down to just five points. So he'll be very, very limited in that. And that way a cult can be his specialized area. And that will give him his full. 50, uh, that will give him his full 50 points. And that is it for his, that is it for his overall skill points. And now I am going to go to the remaining 25 points that he has, that he can spend anywhere he likes, including outside of areas uh, that he normally would have. So, um, so 25 more points and, 
actually I will put 15 of those points back into um, back into German so now he has 10 points left to spend and let's put them into let's put five into library use so it makes him a master of that as well and five more points we will he's kind of strong so let's see if he is going to be I'm gonna put some points into throw all right um, I'm already starting to get a, a perception of him so I'm going to put throwing and bring that up to a 30 so he's gonna have a 30 in throwing and um, that leaves five more points left and let's see five more points left and let's put that oh let's put that in Cthulhu Mythos 25 and now he is complete so this is the character here I could take out the mental disorders portion and so uh, he has college degrees so he is going to have a degree in archaeology um, He has a degree in archaeology and he has a degree in the occult. I'm just putting the ones in that he has a 50 use in. And let's say library use. So those are his 350 skills. And uh, I will continue to flesh out this character later. So here we have his, he can uh, attack by weapon. So I guess you could roll any of these and it'll show his, uh, his attempts here. Firearms, doesn't currently have any, but I will input them. He'll eventually have a pistol and I'll uh, stack that stuff out. His personal data, so I am going to have his residence, his, um, his personal description, his family and friends. I'll do some of his family background. His investigator background is going to start at zero. I have to roll his uh, income. Uh, let's see if we have that here as far as starting income is concerned. Um, So let's see if we have, I'll get into the actual uh, skill use later on. Um, I'm looking to see where we have starting income. I will save that for when we finish fleshing out the character. But here we have it. So I'm just going to, um, I am just going to summarize what we have here so we have edward philip burton a professor male age 40. his specialty areas or, or degrees are in um are in archaeology occult and library use his characteristics i have all of these here i have his sanity is at 50. his magic points are at 10. his hit points are at 10. um you can see the distribution of his skills now and what he actually has in his professional skill areas are checked off with the blue the blue uh, checks. These are his hand-to-hand -hand weapons abilities. 
and uh, no firearms and I will again finish out flesh out the rest of the character so you can see it's a it's a point expenditure system uh, and it is uh, it's a point expenditure system it is uh, d100 based so it's a uh, it's a it's a classless system in the sense that you can then pick up any any skills uh, later on uh, that are not necessarily within your profession. So um, it's just during character creation where you have the two separate pools. And then once you're outside of character creation, uh, then I will go into further detail as far as improving the characters. So um, so there you have it's a it's a fairly you know quick system. You can see I did this and. In just over 35 minutes or so, and that was with a lot of added context and everything, actual character creation and spending those points literally took me, uh, of that time, 20 minutes. Um, you know, so uh, maybe even less than 20 minutes. So that's how quickly you can create a character for uh, Call of Cthulhu Class Classic Edition. And, uh, you know, I am... I am certain but I refer you to uh, other YouTube channels like Legion of Myth as they're going over um, seventh edition as I speak right now they're they've been doing a series of videos uh, that's mostly um, that's mostly heathen dog is going over those uh, those videos and I didn't want to watch those yet because I knew I was doing this at the same time and I don't want to um, I don't want to conflate ideas or um, or information uh, between the two differences between the two systems you know I wanted to just handle this one straight up and then I will take a look at that and then maybe down the road sometime I will start uh, you know from my channel looking at Call of Cthulhu 7th edition um, you know maybe do a comparison because I do have 2nd and 3rd edition and 7th edition so maybe I'll do a comparison between the three at some point but uh, hope you enjoyed this video hope that it uh, you know it really does demonstrate how easy it is to create a character for Call of Cthulhu and um, I'm sure I have a few more things to flesh out here and there but the actual uh, attribute roles and and how they impact other elements of the you know of the character sheet are, are fairly streamlined especially using that character sheet on uh, roll 20 it kind of did some of the calculations for myself as well so um, you know so I highly recommend using a uh, using a system uh, and you can you can access that even for free on roll 20 and and do that as well and then you can just print it out and you you have your character sheet in front of you so um, so there are definitely resources out there for you, uh, free ones out there for you to go and uh, and create characters very quickly and easily um, using a VTT like Roll20 uh, to do so uh, as, I, as I demonstrated. So hope you like this video. Enjoy the rest of your week, a uh, weekend I should say. Uh, so, um, you know, happy weekends always and keep on gaming and uh, keep on exploring these other um, I mean, Call of Cthulhu is kind of mainstream. It's probably the second most popular uh, tabletop role-playing game uh, globally, you know, out there. In some places, it's the most popular, such as like Japan and, and other parts of Asia. It is super, super uh, uh, well-supported by, uh, by Chaosium. They're, they're always putting out new stuff and uh, their, their continued support for both their original, uh, this was a, you know, this was a celebration of their 40th anniversary. So, um, uh, which was in 2021. So they celebrated their 40th anniversary with a re, uh, a reissue of uh, second edition, as you see. Um, but they're really, really supportive of just generating new content for, uh, you know, for their game system. So, Highly recommend it if you haven't tried it yet. It is just such a different experience compared to, let's say, Dungeons and Dragons, 
uh, to play in a Call of Cthulhu, um, whether it's a one shot or a uh, or even a campaign, you attempt a campaign at uh, Call of Cthulhu. Uh, you know, it really is a totally different experience. I am looking forward to starting a very small group uh, for uh, I will be running Call of Cthulhu as a keeper and um, looking for three players. I am going to run this on um, I'm going to run this on Roll20 uh, for now since I've already started using it and I'm populating that character sheet and uh, you know I want to keep that that group small. Uh, just three players because I think that that plays into somewhat of the theme of, uh, of Call of Cthulhu in the 1920s. Uh, it relates closer to uh, some of you know some of what I've read and, and saw that they're not these big parties of you know parties of five running out and doing these things. So I, I think that a you know an investigator, a professor, and and uh, one other support kind of uh, person would actually um, would actually tie into the theme of the uh, role playing game best, and so that's what I'm going to be looking to do. So again, hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you want to leave any questions or comments in there, absolutely feel free to do those. Uh, those are what really drive my channel uh, forward. That's what drives me uh, to keep on, uh, you know, doing these videos is for your suggestions and and comments and uh, you know and of course if you hadn't subscribed, please consider subscribing and uh, you know keep those numbers up. It's the channel's been growing really really well, you know, as of late. Uh, so I must have hit a, an algorithmic stride. And uh, it's, it's coming up more and more in people's mentions. And so, uh, you know, please feel free to, uh, to join uh, and just subscribe. You can also join as a member. I picked up another new member uh, the other day. And so my membership is up to about four or potentially even five people. I have to double check. Uh, but that's been doing really, really well. And I'm, you know, so grateful for those that are contributing to the channel, even as little as you know, 99 cents is, uh, you know, it really does help out uh, for me to buy more products that I can keep on bringing to you here on the channel. And, that, and that's how I use 100% of everything that this channel makes uh, as far as the, uh, you know, super chats and memberships and, and then just the general advertising from the channel. Uh, I take everything that I make from this and right back into gaming so that I can continue bringing you, um, you know, more content as we go forward. So have a great rest of your weekend. And uh, I always look forward to seeing you on the gaming screen or in person at a convention sometime soon. Take care.